I'm happy to post you in my homeland, Italy, and in Milano in particular for this uh, interesting symposium. Uh, I have to tell you that uh, Uh, I have to tell you that I was amazed by the intensity IOL. You see the characters of the IOL here, but probably other speakers will speak in detail about that. Because uh, it truly has, the last line is the most important for me, any innovative, diffractive design. What does this mean? This is a pentafocal lens where the distant focus is obtained through diffraction. This is not the only lens obtaining the distant focus for, uh, uh, by diffraction. Uh, there are others. But this is the only lens having a, a five foci and the twice uh, application of uh, the principle we learned about, uh, about the intensifier, how to intensify the foci we, uh, using the, the, the first order harmonic uh, focus. Uh, this aberration study in particular I'm presenting today compared the pentafocal intensity with the trifocal fine vision IOL, a very good IOL that uh, used to be my preferred. And these are the main differences between the two IOLs. Uh, we uh, have the diffractive, the refractive focus is the distant focus for the fine vision. However, it is the intermediate focus for the intensity. And so I wonder how this might impact the <coughs> operative refractive result and aberration in particular. Uh, for this particular study, I consider 20 patients per group uh, after cataract surgery. The corneal astigmatism had to be low, binocular implants, the age were very similar, as very similar were the axial length and the other parameters, and we had more than six months follow-up for all the data presented here. First important data, the automated refraction, we know that it will not work with uh, multifocal lenses, but especially they uh, do not work when multifocal lenses are of complex technology and use diffraction to obtain the distant focus. So for the intensity in particular, a sort of myopia appears at the outer refraction refractor that does not exist, while the astigmatism um, values are uh, pretty nice. So first, if you have a minus 1.25 in your post-operative intensity patient, that's correct. They are not myopic. About the wavefront refraction, um, as you know, we can obtain refraction out of a circle and not out of the circumference by wavefront measurement, and we obtain the same uh, both at 3.5 and at 5 mm aperture diameter the intensity providing myopic results in a sphere as compared with the fine vision. What about high order aberration? Well, nicely it seems that the implementation of two additional foci did not impair the aberration result as far as high order aberration are concerned and also the spherical aberration Z for zero uh, was uh, pretty the same as compared between those two types of IOLs. The Z for zero is, uh, was slightly negative with, with both types of IOL. What about coma? Um, as you know, coma has, is, is not a vector, but it, it is represented as a vector. And so we need both the absolute, the, the true, the actual um, figure and the absolute figure. The absolute figure um, meaning that if the coma is in one direction and the other eye is in another direction, the net result will be zero. But if we take the absolute values of coma, it will not be zero, it will be a little bit higher. Again, no difference between the intensity and the fine vision. For all these measurements, I took the 5mm optical zone because uh, 
aberration at 3.5 mm optical zone are very, very uh, smaller. And so to find out if any difference would be, we need uh, something more, something larger. So the uh, trifoil, the actual and the absolute values uh, uh, are quite different because uh, even here, when the absolute value is taken into account, the, mm, the difference is not existing, while it seems that at least with trifoil, we have one preferred direction with, uh, with intensity. This data um, regards the double pass uh, OCAS aberrometer. That is, uh, the OCAS aberrometer, as you know, does not only consider the, um, the, the shape of the wavefront, but also the intensity of the, of the wavefront. This is to say, if we, see, we are in Milan here, if we see a building through that fog, the shape of the building is perfect, but we can barely see it and the OCAS will tell us there is a fog. And I was very curious because this is related with corneal transparency and intraoperal lens transparency. And so we went through the um, OCAS scattering index, again the same. We went through the width of the MTF curve at 50% of the height and at 10% of the height again showing uh, quite better results with the intensity, but those results were not statistically significant. And this is the square ratio. The square ratio is a number, and actually it is a percentage of the optical quality of that particular eye referred to the maximum optical quality available. Again, we found no difference between those two lenses. But the uh, OCAS mean is related with MTF, and the MTF cutoff were exactly the same with the two type of lenses with no difference. What about this photopsia and night glare questionnaire? Uh, we found uh, a slightly better result with the, with the intensity as for halo Starbucks, but I like to say that the, uh, the addition of two foci did not lead to an increased um, figure of uh, dysphotopsia and night glare with the intensity. Actually, it seems that those figures are on the decrease as compared with the fine vision uh, IOL, but this requires further investigation with uh, probably different types of, of devices. In conclusion, the intensity IOL induced the wavefront diffraction that depended on the intermediate refractive focus. The difference between the wavefront refraction at 3.5 and 5 mm was the same as that of the fine vision IOL because the spherical aberration is, is quite, quite similar. High order aberration and spherical aberration were the same, and measured spherical aberration with intensity IOL was. 0.117 5 mm in this study. Coma was very low and similar with either IOL. Prefoil was higher with intensity only when the angle of rotation was not considered, otherwise it was exactly the same. And the double pass measured scattering index and optical quality um, and similar with either IOL. And now this photopsia was a little bit lower with the intensity IOL. So, a very promising lens that produced a seamless vision. I didn't speak about the very flat defocus curve, others will do, but for sure, this is a, a, a major step, left, a step forward in intraoperable lens technology. Thank you for your attention.